Hello folks, it's Leo from Leo's Golf here, and I'm back again today with another exciting video featuring the V-Track Golf Launch Monitor, the new device from uh, the Korean folks, the Leon people, who uh, have been putting this unit out in Korea now for quite some time and have over 10,000 uh, commercial applications or installations out there. Uh, it's come to North America, and they're rapidly working on improving North American software. Today I'm going to show you an update. Uh, it's a beta actually of their own VTrack uh, range software with the, um, the metric suite. It's vastly improved compared to the last one I showed you, which I kind of uh, really didn't highlight much at all in my other video. But uh, if you'd like to see that, please check out my channel and uh, you can see it there. So just sit back, relax, and I'm going to roll through this video as quickly as possible and try to walk you through some of the menus too in the software. Okay, so as I said, I'm going to hit some shots for you and uh, go through the paces of the software. We'll together learn how the interface is doing. You will see me turn back to look at the screen because um, I can't see everything in the windows that uh, I'm operating in at the moment. Um, it's just easier for me to turn back and look and see what the metrics are doing. So I've got a pitching wedge in my hand. I will note too that um, GS Pro we'll have a pop-up window just below the metrics on the left-hand side and above club selection, which is going to show the, um, the actual video at the moment of impact. Um, in OBS Studio, which I'm using to record this, I can't seem to figure out how to get just that window captured properly on top of GS Pro. So you'll see it here just on the um, enclosure if you look closely. So here we go. Pitching wedge, usually about 100 yard or so club for me. That one got away okay. Yeah, just over 100 yards. Nice. Good contact. From that video that you can see on the uh, enclosure, it looks like just maybe center, slightly off center. Uh, you will notice in the interface software, they're showing it as center, which is good. I think that's a little bit high on the club. I don't think I hit it that high up on the club. We'll see with a few more shots what happens. Uh, and you'll notice too that I'm a lefty that's showing a right-hand club, so I think that's something they're going to have to work on. Um, again, these are the steps in the evolution of software, but wow, what a difference. Take a look at that interface. So much more uh, graphically pleasing information. Uh, all the metrics down at the bottom. They have also uh, told me, and I believe the instructions say so, that the metrics shown at the bottom, uh, and perhaps in the tiles too, the video tiles or the uh, image tiles, will show a, a yellow or orange color, I believe it is, if anything has been estimated because they weren't able to uh, read the real numbers. Um, they'll do a uh, calculation based on algorithms, but otherwise if you see all the white uh, numbers as we do right now, that means it actually measured and uh, has displayed what they've been able to see with the cameras. Okay, so let's hit another shot. Uh, again, pitching wedge. That one was a little thin, it felt. Still got out to 100. You can see by probably the height of the shot. Uh, yeah, still showing up high in the club. It's almost like they've not really addressed vertical, but more so, more so just the horizontal impact location, minus 7, meaning minus 7 from center. Um, if you look at that video, I would agree with that, I think, based on where it's meeting closer to the heel. But definitely not the uh, the vertical. I think the vertical is either inverted because it's a left-hand club or they still have issues with the actual vertical numbers. Let me hit one more. I'm going to try uh, a little bit toey if I possibly can. See, see how it measures. So video shows that it is a little more towards the toe. Yep, there it is on the screen. And yeah, it's showing, it's showing uh, likewise as the impact point too. And actually, I think maybe I did hit the ball closer to that spot. I think it's still a bit high. So I will report that back. Um, as I said, this is a beta. So as a tester, I'm going to report this information for sure. Um, but you can see clearly they're, they're showing you your flight path side view, top view, all your uh, front view impact. Uh, impact from top view, side view, and all the parameters associated along with all the ball spin uh, information. And it looks really good. I, I, I like it. I like the colors. Um, it's uh, it's kind of classy looking actually compared to some interfaces that uh, I've seen out there. So 
three positive. So, uh, life hybrid, and we'll hit a couple shots. Let's see if the club head type changes. I, I think it will not because they don't have hybrids in their library. They only have irons and woods and a putter, of course. So hit that heel for sure. Showing it towards the heel, but again high, and it is depicting an iron head. So that's another refinement they're going to have to get to. But I don't want to rain on their parade because the improvement's great. Um, very usable interface. Hit another one. Healy again. Yep, showing a little towards the heel, but that height again. So that gives you a good idea. Uh, maybe hit a driver. Let's see if the club head changes. Hit a driver or two. Let's see if their image of the driver does pop up. Maybe I'll even do a three wood. So put it on a T. Again, using just a regular ball. Try not to embarrass myself here with the slice that I normally have. And I pulled it instead. Not much distance either. You can see, look at my club path. Whew. And yeah, there's the pull. There's the yellow line. But there we go. We do have the, uh, it was high on the toe that time. We do have the wood head showing. And I'm going to pay more attention to impact spot this time because I feel like maybe with the driver it's getting it right. So let's just see. So heel, heel high. Yeah, you know what? I would agree with that. Um, I'm nervous to do it, but I'm going to try and hit one lower on the face. I'll use a marked ball this time. And let's see if that comes up right or correct. Wow, I'm really pulling the ball today. And that one was pretty weak as well. I might be just trying to get to look at the video too quickly. Okay. So that one's more toey. Uh, I think a little lower. Yeah, it's still showing it up there on the top. I don't agree with that. I, I think it was lower. I'll try one more. And certainly I'm going to report back to them that they should take a look at the, um, the vertical measurement on their shots in the depiction. I'm going to choke up on the club just a tad and see if I can get low on the club. Hopefully there's no bad effect with the shot here, or not too bad effect. Yeah, slicey because I stopped the swing. So that's definitely lower on the club in the video and still high here. So I definitely have to report that. Okay, and I'll stop it at that point. Um, but as you can see, I mean, working flawlessly goes into the virtual world so quickly. Uh, I have confidence with the ball numbers and, and actually most of the club, uh, information too, just that, uh, that vertical position I don't agree with. Okay. So I've decided to do this portion of the video with, uh, just kind of a voiceover, uh, and give you a real good look at the interface. Um, so here it is in its native form. You've got all your tiles here. Um, you can see at the bottom, you have all the tiles showing the individual club and, and ball parameters. And as I was kind of hovering around here up top, you've got the actual vision or vision, visual, sorry, um, effects as well, showing you both impact point front along with uh, the top and then the side view and ball, uh, over here, flight path, and it's available in a side view and a top view. Okay, you, if you come over to the logos down in the bottom left here, just above the tiles, you've got your club type. So you've got putter, you've got uh, basically your irons and your woods. And if I come back, 
and I go here, you're going to see basically your uh, left or right hand selection type. Come back here, and we have the ball type, which is marked or non marked. And now let's move up to some more of the meat and potatoes. This is the indicator showing that you actually have a network connection. This one uh, will show you that your ball is in a readable area on your mat. I'm just going to move a ball over for you. Give me a second. Put it on the mat. And it should light up. There it goes. So you can see the indicator. Um, over here now, you've got some um, windows that let you really go in and configure things uh, more deeply. So first thing I'm going to show you is how you can auto launch GS Pro. So I, I have it selected for GS Pro, but you could also select the range for uh, E6 Connect. And uh, the first time you do it, you have to show the path. And then uh, you can also choose here whether or not you want to overlay on the simulator or not. And you can also configure where the video for that um, shot impact uh, is located on the GS Pro screen. Uh, the other nice thing they've included is these displays. So you, you get to choose which monitor you're displaying the window to, which is nice. Um, I know with, for instance, uh, TGC, it was a bit cumbersome. Um, so it's nice to see that they've got uh, these three window options or display options that would allow you to shift which monitor in your environment the VTrack software would display on. And there's that auto launch on or off for whatever software you've chosen. Uh, if I go to device, it's basically just showing me my connection with my Ethernet port. Uh, but it's good because you can you know see whether you've got a current connection or it will, it'll say not connected, I suppose, if you're not. And then there's a connect button here and it'll try to auto find your network. Um, if I go to advanced, this is great too. They've introduced um, selectable parameters and adjustable parameters, I could say. Uh, ball speed, wind speed, uh, the angle the wind's coming from, your temperature, humidity, your altitude, even your green speed and the firmness, which is great. And there's the old reset button in case things get too wonky. Uh, on the general tab, kind of the stuff that's on the main screen, really, like club selection, uh, handedness, mark or unmarked ball, your imperial or metric uh, units. You get to choose also the color that is indicated on the launch monitor when the ball's ready. And there's those selections again for which display you want to show the software on. Okay, so that's, um, that's a good overview of exactly what uh, is available. Um, I, I'm still kind of learning it myself. I literally just loaded it up today. I thought I'd show you real quickly. Uh, I'm going to click this because I'm kind of curious. Because there's nothing. It's just showing a GS Pro logo. Okay. And the three buttons here are the hamburger. It's just an about or a license information uh, tab. So not much to see there. So that's it. Um, I'm going to switch back now just so I can show my face and say goodbye and give you my final thoughts. Okay, folks. So that'll wrap it up for this video. Uh, I think I've given you a good uh, look at the beta of or the recent beta version of this new VTrack software. I think it's come miles and miles from where it was. Um, a very rudimentary piece of software uh, with the launch. I think they're coming along nicely. I like the graphics. I like the information they're giving. Um, I might like to see that video, you know, of the impact spot available right in their own interface as opposed to being moved over to the GS Pro uh, world. But I'm okay either way, I suppose, with it too. Uh, they do need to work on things like press lefties, making sure they depict the right image for a club. And I think, as I've mentioned often in the video uh, earlier, that the vertical measurements uh, for impact location need some work as well. But I have no doubt that the, uh, the club information uh, will be improved, and it's certainly the ball information is very good. I know you can play GS Pro all day long or uh, E6 all day long and enjoy it, get uh, good feedback, good information, and performance. Um, you saw how quickly the balls go into the virtual world. Uh, in my other videos, you've seen demonstrations of the chipping and putting, so you know that um, the device performs very well. Uh, really no glitches whatsoever. Installation this time around was much easier with the software. Um, I think they're going to make it more and more turnkey. Uh, and with that word uh, turnkey, I'll also recap again to you folks out there thinking of commercial locations. I think this device is great. 
It's a, uh, a no fuss, no muss device. You know, it doesn't have the swing cameras that come native with it, although you can, uh, in the future, from what I understand, add on, you know, an AI feature to do swing training. Um, I think this is a great option because you could simply put these up uh, very cost effectively in a commercial environment, run GS Pro or E6, give folks some metrics, and uh, they'll have a very, very enjoyable experience, be able to play out courses uh, in their entirety right from drive, right to the smallest of putts and chips. Uh, and I think you'll have happy customers. Uh, for those of you who are in Canada and are looking to buy a system, or if, again, if you're a commercial person uh, setting up an establishment, you need several uh, kits, please get a hold of me. It's leo at leosgolf.com or info at leosgolf.com. You can certainly check out that website, www.leosgolf.com. Lots of good information there, uh, even guides for uh, those of you planning and certainly lots of kits, uh, individual components that you can peruse. And we're always here to help uh, folks right across Canada. We ship most packages. If you're purchasing a packages from us, ship uh, cost-free as far as uh, shipping is concerned. So that's, uh, that's a nice little bonus. But I really uh, wanna thank you for watching this video. Uh, if you liked it, please give it a like. And certainly uh, I'd love it if you'd subscribe to the channel. You'll get instant notification when a new video comes out and we will be making more as a beta tester. I'm sure we'll be getting software earlier or in advance and we'll be able to report to you as soon as possible. Okay, but watch this device. I think it is one to watch at $7,000 approximately Canadian. It's certainly going to fight for a piece of market share um, because it's punching well above its weight and certainly in the uh, same category as some of the other launch monitors costing thousands more. Okay, so thanks. Have a great day and we'll see you again soon.